Hello again, so today we're just going to be doing a quick test to see what the thermal gains of our repasting and thermal pads were. So I'm expecting really good gains here. I already know it's somewhere in the vicinity of 25 Celsius and 30 depending on the ambient temperatures. Right now um, the current room temperature is 20 Celsius so with that being said let's get it started. So I'm just going to set it for 5 watts. Actually 4.5, that's the... TDP that GPD set outside the box, so that's what your GPD pocket should be running at. Today we're going to be testing Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, and we're just going to do it for a quick race. And I'm going to show you with a Reva Tuner statistics server what you can expect. So here's uh, the core frequencies, core number one and core number two. Here's the tem temperature of the package. Here's how much wattage we're getting. Here's the battery percentage. That's uh, charging at the moment, so ignore that. And here's the GPU clock frequencies, and here we have our frame rate too. So you can just pay attention to those numbers and you can see what we get out of doing all that. Keep in mind that the frequencies are not running under load at the moment because there's nothing to render. So once you start playing you should see what the real frequency should be. As you can see we're hitting somewhere around 30 frames a second, it's completely serviceable but sometimes there's spikes and drops in the frame rate which means that it's a little bit sturdy. Temperature improvements though are really good, generally out of the box you can expect the package temperature to rise up to 70 degrees when running a 4.5 watt sustain, which is perfectly acceptable but it's just what you get out of the box without touching anything. Temperature is holding low quite beautifully, so you can tell that the modifications did work quite well. Granted, they weren't too cheap, but if you just want to keep the heat low, you can even go as far as turning off the fan or running it. It shouldn't be an issue. I just turned off the fan right now, as you can see. So let's see what the temperature rises up to. So it leveled off at around 56 degrees, it's still pretty good, I mean we are running without the fan after all, 57. So 
So there you have four and a half watts. So now we're gonna turn the fan back on and we're gonna crank it up to nine watts, which is the original intentions I had of running it at. So here as you can see, it says nine watts. So we're gonna apply this by quitting throttle stop and restarting it. Here's the package limit. As you can see, it's already running higher than what it was supposed to. Gonna open the game again. Oh, it crashed. So let's open it again. As you can see, the package is already rising way higher than it was before. So the TDP is uh, set at 9 watts maximum right now. GPD Pocket generally runs at a wattage of 4.5 and, and it can boost up to 8.5 watts but uh, now I set it to 9 watts so that's a 100% increase over the stock wattage that you can pull it would destroy your battery percentage by running it that high but if you plug it in you shouldn't really have any issues with it as long as it stays cool so let's see how it runs frame rate feels a lot snappier we're almost in the 50s and 60s Considerable increase in performance as you can see the CPU clocks do. Just as a reminder, I am uh, running undervolted uh, CPU cores and cache, and also the iGPU score. Um, they're undervolted at a factor of negative 60 millivolts and negative 65 respectively. That also yields an increase in performance. The CPU is now starting to get a little bit hot as you can see, it's rising into the 70 Celsius. It is holding the wattage quite nicely as you can see. So long as you stay under 80 Celsius, that's considered acceptable. And in my experience in this kind of conditions, in a well cooled environment at around 20 Celsius, you can expect it to level off at around 77 to 78 after a while. Beautiful frame rates for the game. We're almost hitting 60 frames per second.
there you have it, 9 watts. As you can see, it is starting to get a little bit on the hot side. Uh, as I previously mentioned, from my experience in these environments, it should level off at around 77, after which it's going to just stop rising. It could get hotter depending on the room temperature, and that's entirely up to how you treat it. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, let's just do one final test. Now I'm just going to crank it out for those who are curious to the maximum wattage, which you can also do. This is unsustainable without external cooling, but if you feel like doing it, feel free. It would melt your CPU, and even with this uh, repasting though, and thermal pads. And it does get fairly hot in the bottom, but nothing too unacceptable as you can see I, with the current thermal pad setup I have. It's still fairly comfortable. Under the heatsink and the CPU, you will feel a little bit of temperature, but I can still hold it comfortably. I don't really have a problem. So, now we're going to go ahead and running a full wattage that this thing can give. I don't recommend doing this, as I said, unless you have some sort of external cooling solution like a fan. In which case, go ahead and also try and keep it plugged in. the package is already rising to the 10 watt range this game in my experience will max out at no more than 12 it could go a little bit higher up to 13 and a half I've seen it go in some other games but this one in particular to max it out you should expect around 12 watts We're easily into the 60 frames per second range now and a lot smoother as you can see but the temperatures are almost to the 80 degrees Celsius. It seems like it's holding right now but it'll only do that for about a minute and then it's going to start getting out of control. It'll keep rising all the way to possibly 90, maybe even more. So I don't recommend running it like this but this is just if you're curious as to how it runs. Beautiful frame rate, but as I said, it's starting to get even hotter now, and I don't really feel like going a lot higher than this. So there you have it. As you can see now it's getting into the 84, 85 range and it'll keep going. I don't have external cooling right now so I can't really keep it under control. Even with the room temperature being as pleasant as it is, it's still not going to be enough. It'll keep going. So I'm just going to stop here right now. That's getting too hot for me. So if you had any questions about how it ran on maximum load, yes it can go as high as you want it to go but again you can't really keep it cooled. So that's about it. If you have any questions about how to do the unlock TDP, I may do a future video on that. And uh, yeah, that's how the GPD runs. Is, is it where to do thermal mods? Yeah, even if you do a cheap setup of um, just a cheap thermal pad, no more than 10 bucks, you can still get it to run at six to seven watts, no problem. Anything higher than that, and you're gonna have to get more expensive modifications, which they are worth it, but it's not for everybody, especially repasting it. It can be a little bit tricky and it's kind of scary when you open your CPU because something can go wrong. So there you have it. Leave a like, leave a comment or whatever you want and uh, 
Thanks for watching.